My name is Sandra Black. I'm a, a cognitive and stroke neurologist at uh, Sunnybrook Health Science Centre, which is fully affili affiliated with the University of Toronto. Uh, and that's where I have been since uh, I uh, finished my fellowship. Um, and that's, uh, that was in 1985. So I've, I've, um, I started off, um, my fellowship was to do with the brain behavior relationships at Western University with Dr. Andrew Curtis, who is an expert in this area. And I was very interested in lesions in the brain, like stroke uh, injury to the brain that led to people losing their ability to speak or to understand words or to carry out actions. So I was fascinated in the brain from even uh, as a young child, my brother was a nurse, my father was a obstetrician gynecologist in Sault Ste. Marie. And my brother ended up being a professor of neurosurgery at Harvard and I was sort of interested in the brain. And I remember having a conversation with my father and brother around the time that they started doing transplants way back. I'm not even sure what decade it was, but I was, I guess, old enough to think about these things, wondering if, you know, if you transplanted a person's brain, would that body now be you know, that, that person, like, identify with that person or the other way around? So it was kind of a strange thought experiment. But it indicated that I was I was really fascinated with the brain. And so when I finished uh, my medical school training, I was able to uh, go, it was sort of a blended program. I was able to get a Commonwealth scholarship and went to Oxford and I studied 19th century understanding of brain and behavior. And that was fundamentally important to me because I learned quite a lot about the history of thought and what was going on in what actually has affected modern, the modern day. Now my practice turned out to be some stroke, so I'm kind of unique and I'm a behavioral neurologist, but very interested in stroke. But I was seeing all these people with this gradual progressive disorder that, you know, is Alzheimer's disease or frontal temporal dementia. And so I started to get very interested in that. And in the early 1990s, established something called the Sunnybrook Dementia Study, which was a kind of a research embedded in care approach where my patients, I learned from my patients, and if they consented, we were able to give them more, a, a brain imaging protocol that has turned out to influence the main ones that have been used across the country. So altogether, we've, we've collected about 1,600 people very de in very detailed ways. We follow people to neuropathology and, and follow them throughout their course. And we've contributed, therefore, to criteria for the different types of dementia and have learned a lot from that. My special brand has been to understand white matter disease, which is very common as people age. And we were able to follow individuals with a lot of it and not so much of it to postmortem. And we also had great collaboration with our neuropathologists. And we discovered that the basis for this is actually hardening of the deep venules in the brain. That's been sort of what we, uh, I think what we contribute uniquely to the field an understanding of the basis of, of this very common problem. It's like 20% of people in the 1990s but in older people, usually older people, can happen in young people. We're still following people over time in this way. And then TDRA came along as a way we could do this in a much bigger way, because we see about, together we see about 2,000 new patients a year. We're developing a database and we're developing a collaboration network so that we can do even more in 30 seconds, 90 seconds, give you a measure of the hippocampal volume, which is very important for understanding memory loss, right? And to trace that, it took us three hours per size, six hours per person to get to what we call ground truth. And so what the Sunnybrook Dementia Study and some other studies have done is they've given us a good measure of ground truth. And we develop pipelines that allow you to have a personalized uh, quantity of analysis of your brain in a way that's actually quite superior. And I think with the advent of, of what may be effective disease modifying therapies that are targeting the early stage of disease, we can now make track what's happening as these drugs become available and you know there's going to be pressure to get access but we also welcome other kinds of interventions for people further along the way and there are some uh, oral agents and other um, repurposing of drugs that are going on the drugs we already have may turn out to have beneficial effects so we're open to everything we can get because we need everything we can get hold of that might slow down and help people live better live longer and with better lives